I think the biggest challenge is, do we identify a moral compass, an ethical measure, that then constrains the automatic uh, um, um, dimension of this digitization. The problem with the digitization is that most of it is automatic. And in my opinion, this is my opinion, what is automatic means that it doesn't have a moral compass, an ethical compass, or else if some rule has been put into the algorithm, that rule has been determined by somebody whom I don't know, and I'm not sure whether he or she shares the same values that I do. And I think this is the biggest challenge we have. How do we come up with an ethical compass, a moral north star? that helps us move forward and then may, helps us make the maximum use of the technology which uh, we have available and which, if used properly, could really bring a major step forward for humanity. I mean, what language do you use to transmit to the audience out there, to the new generation, to the upcoming young people? What language do we use to translate uh, the values inbuilt in Catholic social teaching to a society that is uh, focused on Googling anything that comes up and discovering uh, how to live life by Googling. You know, this is, uh, how, do you, how do you address this? How do you do this when you're having lunch or dinner in a restaurant and all the people around the table are with their smartphones checking what's going on? How do we translate this? And I think the way we should do this is first of all to understand that uh, the values of Catholic social teaching are universal values. This is not a monopoly of the Catholic Church. These are values which anyone of any religion, even of no religion, would find, quite comfort would, be, would find himself or herself quite comfortable with them. I mean, the value of solidarity, for example. You know, let's, the weakest in our society is the weakest link of our society, and therefore it is in our best interest not only morally and ethically, but also in the best interest of society for us to dedicate resources to help people who are the weakest amongst us. And that is a value which I think is, is, is propounded very much by the Catholic Church, but as I said, anyone else would be quite comfortable with that value. And so many others, all the other values, social justice, the dignity of the human person, the respect we should have towards each other. So I think the challenge here is um, explaining in a simple way that these are values which are in the best interest of all of us and that if we, if we do not focus on them, then the chances are that we will live in a society which is worse for us at the end of the day. And that is something which, uh, which would help us design a language for us to be able to communicate, to get that spark that gets us communicating with uh, an audience which is not necessarily Catholic, not necessarily Christian but which is important for them to understand that what we are talking about, we should be able to share easily between us. Well, the answer to that question is probably yes, but as we all know, um, I am a, by profession a lawyer myself. No law will, uh, will force people to, to choose between right and wrong. This has to come fr from your inside, from your own sensibilities, your own set of values with which you measure your everyday decisions and choices. Eventually force us to understand that a digitized world, um, an artificial intelligence world, unless built in with this ethical compass, the, the, that thing which tells us that something is right or something is wrong, that we should do this and not do the other thing, unless we have that, then we're, we're, we're faced with a problem. Um, yes, we need regulations. Yes, we need regulatory authorities. I am all for that. But at the end of the day, it's our moral compass, our internal moral compass, this, not just personally, but of all, of all our community, all our society. This is where I would um, um, touch on an aspect which I myself in the Fondazione continue to push every single time. I think we need to address the decision makers. It's not just about the language for us to... Um, speak to the society we have around us, the new generation, etc. But our policy makers need to be sensitized to all of this. Our politicians, our members in the authorities that take the decisions, all of those need to listen carefully to the message, which I would say not just the Fondazione, but so many people, including Pope Francis himself, who constantly transmits this message. We have ourselves, all of us, 
to understand that this is a responsibility we have for our society today and for future generations. Is such an exceptional message, which again, <laughs> in parallel to what I was saying earlier with respect to the whole values of the Catholic social teaching, everybody shares what Pope Francis stated publicly and probably surprised a lot of people. But what he was saying is, listen, this is the planet. We are all in the same beautiful planet. And it is in our best interest, it is in our responsibility, but in our best interest and in the interest of our children and grandchildren, that we take care of this planet and that we take the necessary action to address all the challenges that uh, we ourselves, humanity, has created over the ages. And an argument which is uh, very, very uh, relevant to the challenges of digitization, which is a new world. Huh? It's, it's a, new, a new world, this is new. I attended a conference in Berlin, organized as well by the Fondazione, at the end of last year, and the topic was debated over there, and this um, expert was brought to address us, and he was telling us, you know, the advance of artificial intelligence is, is something incredible. In the health sector, for example, it's already there. But then he, he said, now take your smartphones out of your pockets, and you should realize that today, if you speak to your smartphone, it understands what you're telling it, and it searches what you're asking it to search. That's a little biscuit-sized machine that fits into our pocket, and it is intelligent enough to actually understand what we tell it to do and, 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 and searches the topic, Siri. He was talking about Siri. Yeah? There you are. He said, that is the level of advance that has been registered in the technological world. So his message was, you know, be realistic. This is where we are today, and something needs to be done quickly which ties in precisely with the messages that Pope Francis continues to transmit to the world every single day. Hopefully, more people will listen to what he is saying. Again, I, I might turn the clock back and put myself in the years of the beginning of the last century when the Industrial Resolution, uh, Revolution was, was taking place. And rerum rerum novarum, you know. And there were people at the time who were scared, who were saying, you know, this is, well, this is going to cost us millions of jobs because now machines are going to take over. We're going to become machines. And, and, well, human nature is an incredibly beautiful thing, you know. And uh, human nature learned from its mistakes during the Industrial Revolution, of course, because mm, mistakes were made and mine. But, uh, but humanity managed to find new opportunities. And uh, the lessons learned were translated into a better world, into a situation where our economies moved forward and millions of jobs were created. Of course, uh, it's not as simple as that, because the millions of jobs that were created needed new training facilities, new education, uh, a new form of education. Um, so it's, it's, it's a complex solution, not just one thing. So the same thing I would say with digitization. I think that there will be jobs that will be lost, all those jobs that can be robotized, um, placed under an automatic process, those jobs will, will finish. They will be uh, converted into more productive systems, cheaper ways of delivery, etc. So that will happen. We, we, we should not uh, elude ourselves. No, we can't stop that. You're not going to stop that. Yes, but I remember visiting a factory in Malta, where I come from, uh, which used to employ a thousand people. Today it employs 150. Um, this is a manufacturing uh, um, factory, uh, creating little things in the millions. Um, in the past 20 years, they robotized everything. So what has happened? Yes, there were a loss of about 700 jobs, but then the company needed about 100 new engineers because, you see, the machines needed maintenance needed uh, intelligent people capable to upgrade, needed uh, the supply of specific services that previously were not required by the company but were now required, etc. My point is, you lose jobs but you gain some others and to gain those, you need a different set of skills that need to be provided by the education. Yes, yes. So, the answer to your question is not a simple, uh, you know, no, yes, we're going to lose jobs, no, no. There aren't, there, there aren't simple answers. But then again, we come back to the policymakers, and I come back to the politicians. I think we need to address that specific group of people because they are the ones who need to take long-term decisions. They are the ones who cannot take short-term, quick popularity, uh, popular decisions of the moment. That's the worst thing we could do in a digitized age. This is, this is the challenge. Everything is so fast. 
in a digitized age, quickly. You know, changes that used to take 20 years now take 20 months. That's the, the, how fast we need to go. Our politicians, and I am a former politician, so I'm speaking to myself. Our politicians need to understand that they need to plan long term and they need to do so quickly, urgently, but go for the long term solutions, not for the short term ones. Not for the populism, but for the substance of what makes our life a better life. Well, no, I'm not convinced. I think a lot, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. A lot more work to persuade, to convince our politicians. Well, I'll, I'll take one step back. A lot more work to convince good people to enter politics. A lot more work to convince people that politics is the strongest, most effective tool to bring change. Hopefully good change. But that's the quickest way. That's the only way you can get change in a country, in a nation, in a in a way that, that, that spreads around the whole community. There's no other, no other tool which is as effective as politics. And therefore, first challenge, Fondazione can do this, but so many others. Let's persuade people that politics is a good thing, not a bad thing. That participating in the common good is possibly most effective through politics. And then once you get that level of politicians, let's persuade our existing people in politics, in government, in power, that populism is not the solution. On the contrary, populism is the, is the worst kind of solution uh, to the present challenges. Because what we need is l solutions that are long term, not short term. And again, here the Catholic uh, social values, the common good, is a predominant feature of all of this.